adoration. Adoration opens and offers the greatest treasure, the heart. Adoration opens and offers the greatest treasure, the heart. Offering the heart to Jesus through adoration. The great American bishop, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, who was known as a great evangelist through radio and television, and during his prime was reaching 30 million people a week, was known for making a holy hour, time of prayer and adoration before Jesus and the Holy Eucharist every single day of his priesthood. And he made that promise at his ordination. And someone once asked Fulton Sheen why or who inspired him, what saint was it that inspired him to make that commitment of time and prayer with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament? He said it was a young Chinese martyr, a young girl. Communism had infiltrated many countries in the beginning of the 19th of the 20th century, including Poland and Mexico. It also infiltrated China. There was a village in northern China that was known for a group of very faithful Catholics. And when the communist soldiers arrived in this village, at first the locals thought it would be somewhat of a peaceful transition, but one day everything changed. The soldiers marched into the Catholic school and began to smash all the religious art and the crucifixes and statues. They put the children in the classroom and asked the children to immediately throw away all of their rosaries and holy cards and religious medals. And all of the children immediately obeyed, except for one, a little girl in the back who quietly protested by sitting and remaining in her seat. The soldiers, seeing her actions as defiant, rose up and told the town to go to the local church. They grabbed the girl and found her father and made them go and stand in the middle of the church so they could be made an example of. They first asked the father if he truly believed in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. The father said he did, proclaimed his faith that Jesus is the bread of life. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And so immediately they took the father away, probably never seen of again. Then they proceeded to the tabernacle and broke it open and took the sacred hosts and threw them on the ground and the soldiers began stomping on them and desecrating them. They took the parish priest and made a makeshift prison inside the church where he was locked away. They then surrounded the church with armed guards. The parish priest was surprised because soon after the little girl returned to the church. She was able to sneak through the guards and she came back into the sanctuary and she knelt down in front of the hosts scattered across the floor and she prayed in adoration. And then she slowly bent down to the ground and picked up one of the hosts with her tongue and received communion. The little girl would do this every single day for nearly a month. Then on the final day when one host remained, she made a noise that startled one of the guards. The guard ran into the church and fatally shot her. As she lay dying in the sanctuary, she moved slowly to the last host to receive it. Fulton Sheen said, if this little girl, surrounded by so much danger, could make intentional time to be with Jesus and adore him in adoration, then I think I can do an hour a day. The Feast of the Epiphany, where the Magi come to the child Jesus, reveals that they bring him not just the treasures of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but they open the treasure of their hearts and offer them to Jesus Christ, the newborn king. They give him homage and prostrate themselves, which means they lie down on the ground as before a divine king. 
they recognized in their hearts that they had found the true God who has become man. Pagans immediately became Christians when they did this. The Feast of Epiphany draws us to understand the greatness of adoration, to open the treasure of our hearts in loving prayer to Jesus in the Eucharist. I didn't know anything about Eucharistic adoration until I was in college and began to make my own visits to the chapel where the Catholic chaplain would always have adoration for the college students on Tuesday evenings at 9 p.m. Many of us would often go. And it was in those moments with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist in the golden monstrance placed on the altar in adoration. It was in those moments that I recognized that my love for Jesus was growing. It was in the time of prayer of adoration where Jesus asked me to be a priest. It wasn't during Mass. It was during adoration. Adoration is prayer before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, either in the tabernacle or in a monstrance, encased in gold with a glass center when the large consecrated host is placed there for prayer. Adoration. It's recognizing in the hidden in the host is Jesus Christ. As the Magi recognized hidden in a baby boy, the true God, as the little Chinese girl who was a martyr recognized in the scattered, consecrated host now desecrated in the sanctuary floor, truly Jesus Christ, truly God. She didn't just go to receive communion. She went to adore him. She went to open her heart and give Jesus her love. Very simply, very beautifully. We should ask ourselves how we do offer our hearts to Jesus in adoration. We do this at Mass. When the priest elevates the host, we're all kneeling together, all of us looking together at Jesus in the Eucharist, in the sacred host. We do this in a way that allows our bodies and our minds and our souls to open themselves, to open the treasure of our hearts, simply to offer Jesus our faith and our love that, yes, we truly believe that he is here with us. We can find time to come to the church and pray with Jesus in the Eucharist, in the tabernacle, or in times of adoration, which we're building up in our parish in the coming weeks. If we can't make it to a church, we can acknowledge in our hearts in prayer at home that we believe Jesus is in the tabernacle, that we love him, that we adore him. We want to open our hearts to him. It was only through the prayer and my time with Jesus in adoration that my relationship with Jesus began to truly deepen, began to become more real. And so we should ask the Lord to help us to be invited as the star was the invitation for the Magi, a sign which only they could recognize, a singular grace for them to draw them to adoration to open and offer the greatest treasure of all, their lives, their hearts. Their journey wasn't just a journey across the land. It was an interior pilgrimage of their hearts. They made the greatest discovery of all. God become man, God with us. Jesus in the Eucharist is the greatest gift of the Father to us in the Holy Mass. May we be inspired by the Magi to bring ourselves to Jesus, to open the greatest treasure of our lives, our hearts, and to give him our love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen.